Peace and blessings, peace and love. Greetings and salutations. The spirit was quickened. The soul was thickened. It's about 2.30 in the morning. It's going on 3 o'clock in the motherland. I'm in Ghana. I woke from a dream and went into prayer and supplication. My spirit is moved, so I wanted to share something with you. There's a movie coming out called A Woman is King with Viola Davis. And this movie is based off the sister and tribal leader and woman, Ya Asantiwa. She was an Asante African female warrior. She stood there before men, her broken heart protected by her heart and soul. A woman empowered by the thoughts of gold being held by men, not bestowed upon. He may not sit. They stood there confused, overwhelmed by the plague that has brushed the hem of their garments. Headless, willing to plead, not willing to fight. The fight is for the strongest. He may sit weighed by the thoughts of freedom being ripped. Traditions being broken, love being lost, and a kingdom defeated, unwilling to de-identify de herself and take on a life unknowing to her. The only thing that was left was for her to fight her emotions toward these pale colored men were circumcised to create a strong woman. She was ordained to fight. She was ordained to lead. She was ordained mother queen of a kingdom that was willing to die. A mother protects her tribe. A mother dies for her tribe. If men will not rise, I will not die. A body of women will arise. He may not sit. 5,000 of them. 5,000 were led. 5,000 fought in a war that was led by a mother who wasn't willing to sacrifice her tribe. They shall not loot. They shall not sit on the golden stool with pride on her right and humility on her left. She walked with the stool sitting as a crown atop her head, a sign of victory, a sign of identity, a sign of a kingdom that was revived. Ya Asantiwa changed lives. Amen. Ghana, the African Gold Coast, a land indigenous to its people and a nation filled with tribes to the eyes of the British. It was another place needing domination, inhabiting the nation of Ghana. One of the many tribes was the Ashanti tribe, also called Asante. Aside from having their own Akan tongue, Twi and Asante, people respected a stool that symbolized unity and identity. The 18 inches high, 24 inches long and 12 inches wide golden stool was so sacred that it never touched the floor, always rested on a blanket and no one was ever allowed to sit on it. This stool, when not in use, was always protected by security and was allowed to be used in important ceremonies. The belief is the golden stool floated out of the sky and landed on the lap of the first Asante hen, king of Asante, Osei Tutu, the chief priest at the time, declared that the soul of the tribe rested on that stool. Since the golden stool became the most important symbol to the Asante people, in 1896, the British grew angry and hungry and demanded that the Asante hen Prempe the first surrender and give the British the rest of the Asante Confederation territory and the golden stool, paying respect to his culture, Prempe and other chiefs denied the British of their demands and were forcibly exiled to the Seychelles. The Seychelles. The Ashanti people were beheaded, a tactic common to 
the British when wanting to claim a land. Before Asante him Prepempe, Prempe, the first exile, Ya Asantiwa, a ritual male, a woman, past menstruation, was appointed queen mother of the tribe by her brother, Nana Akwesi, Af Afran Opesi, Opesi, who died in a civil war years prior. The appointed king and queen of the Ashanti tribe were holders of the golden stool, a symbol of authority and sovereignty. After the exiling of Asantehen Prempe I, the British sent a governor, Frederick Hodgson, to rule the Asante people so that they could capture the land and sit on the throne. In a meaning, in a meeting called by him in Kumasi, the capital, he told the Asante people of the British intention to which the Asante people were willing to submit. Appalled by the silence and the submission of her people, Ya Asantiwa stood with pride, passion, and grief, writing in her soul and said, how can a proud and brave people like the Asante sit back and look while white men take away their king and chiefs and humiliate them with demand for the golden stool? The golden stool only means money to the white man. They have searched and dug everywhere for it. I shall not pay one predwan to the governor. If you, the chiefs of Asante, are going to behave like cowards and not fight, you should exchange your loincloths for my undergarments. If you, the men of Asante, will not go forward, then we will. We, the women, will. I shall call upon my fellow women. We will fight. We will fight till the last of us falls in the battlefield. In 1900, a shot was fired by her, followed by the drinking of gods. Drinks poured as an offering with chiefs. A solemn oath was made to rid Ashanti of the British rule. Ya Asantiwa was appointed as the first woman to be the leader and commander in chief of the Asante forces. Weapon control, sex deprivation, stockades, surveillance, food deprivation to the British and marches were early short-lived successful fighting tactics towards the British. Soon those proved futile as the British grew stronger and Ya Asantiwa forced to change tactics with the aid of other armies. One by one, the British captured Asante villages, forced to combine village efforts, the British decided to attack Ya Asantiwa by capturing her family. Seeing that territories had been captured and the war was no longer in favor, in her favor, Ya Asantiwa surrendered and was exiled along with her family to the Seychelles where she died in 1921. Ya Asantiwa's war against British was one of strength, courage, love, respect, and patriotism. Despite the Asante people losing the war to keep their nation together, she was successful at saving the identity of her people, which was the Golden Stool. The Golden Stool was never found to this day. The Asantes gave them a replica, and they thought that they had the real Golden Stool, but they did not. This ties in to so many different prophecies. When you look at Joseph and when you look at Moses and when you look at the prophet Messiah, Lord Jesus Christ, they were all raised in Africa. They were all raised in Egypt. They spent their childhood in Egypt. Moses was raised in Egypt. Jesus Christ was raised in Egypt. Joseph was sold by his brothers and ended up becoming uh, the ruler of Pharaoh's house in Egypt And he married Potiphar's daughter An ancient Egyptian priest's daughter Joseph, the son of Jacob The black people in America Are the true ancient Hebrews We are the lost sheep 
of the house of Israel that the Messiah Lord Jesus Christ said that he came for originally. He said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The black people in America who have been deprived and disrespected and neglected and treated lower than dogs are the true seed of the Most High, Jehovah, Yahweh, Adonai. Adonai Yahweh, Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. We are that chosen generation. We are that peculiar people. We are that royal priesthood. We are that holy nation, as it talks about in 1 Peter 2.9. Even when you travel in, in the scriptures all the way back to Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, and it says, and he said unto Abram, this was before Abraham name was changed to Abraham. This was when he was still Abram. Chapter 15 of Genesis, verse 13. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great sustenance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not full. So you see in chapter 15 verses 13 through 16 verse 13 and he said unto Abram know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that land that we were strangers in or are strangers in is America also called Babylon so the strange land is America. That's the land that our ancestors was brought to during slavery when the first slave ship landed in Jamestown, Virginia in 1619. Those slave ships that left from the central region of Ghana from castles of Cape Coast, also called Ogwa, Agua, in the tree tongue. And Elmina Castle, which is the largest slave castle on the west coast of Africa. Elmina Castle, also called Edina. These were the slave castles. And I also had a dream about the slave castles in the central region, Cape Coast, where a tidal wave, a tsunami came and destroyed, utterly destroyed the slave castle. So these slave castles are very evil. And this ties in to the prophecy where it says, in a land that is not theirs. America was not our original homeland. It was not our motherland and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. As 2019 ushered in the 400th year commemoration of slavery in America. That is why the president, Nano Kufo Addo, sanctioned the year of return where he called and blew the trumpet for blacks in America or African Americans or the black ancient Hebrews, the descendants of Abraham were called to come back to their motherland, called to come back to Zion. So this is the prophecy from 1619 to 2019 to 2019, 1619 to 2019. If you subtract 1619 from 2019, you get 400 years, which ties in to the 400 years that's talked about in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And that nation whom whom, whom they shall serve will I judge and afterwards shall they come out with great sustenance. So black Americans or African Americans or the Hebrew uh, Americans coming out with that great sustenance is their dollars versus the CDs. 
is also their education, their degrees, the money that they have, the, the different uh, uh, properties that they have. All these things, when they come back to their motherland, they're coming back with great sustenance. All the education that they have acquired, all the knowledge and wisdom that they have acquired to come back with that sustenance of the Lord and help and rebuild Mama African, help rebuild Zion and join forces with their distant relatives and brothers and sisters of the motherland as we come back. The trumpet is being blown. Amen. And that nation that is talked about in chapter 15, verse 14, is the Amorites. As the Amorites is one of the sons of Canaan, which would be Caucasians, which would be the white man who enslaved us in America. Amen. And let's go to 1 Peter 2.9. 1 Peter 2.9. I know it's very early in the morning, but the spirit was quickened. The soul was thickened. So I had to jump on this. My mother, uh, she sent me something on WhatsApp. It was uh, a woman is king. And she said she's going to go see that on um, the day before my birthday. September 17th is my birthday. But this movie comes out. It'll be available September 16th. And my mother is going to go see that. So when I looked at the uh, when I looked at the uh, the clip of of the movie, I you know the Holy Spirit quickened me. I felt the the, the fire burning all in my stomach. I felt those uh, I felt the flow of living uh, rivers of water in my belly uh, being stirred up and boiled like a fire uh, turned up with water on the stove. I felt it, and and it took me right into the scripture. It took me right into the scripture and took me right into prayer. Well, I went into prayer. I woke up and prayed. And then when I checked my WhatsApp, that's what I saw, the message from my mother. And then another brother, the traveling Israelite, uh, brother Mikael, uh, Nana uh, uh, Giannami, he also sent me something from uh, Go Black. And it was uh, it, it was someone preaching about the, the, the black Hebrews. Which we are. We are the we are the we are that lost sheep of the house of Israel. Amen. We are that peculiar nation. Amen. We are that chosen generation. Amen. That peculiar people. Amen. So let's go to First Peter uh, chapter uh, two, verse nine. First Peter, First Peter chapter two, verse nine. This is dealing with God's own people. We are God's people. The African Americans who are, who are called niggers by the white man, and we call abronies. By our own brothers and sisters, which is another racial term, which really applies to the white man. Uh, the word abroad, a black man, uh, an African American should never be called a brony because if you look at that word a bro, a nipa, it comes from the Akan word from the Asantes, a bro nipa, which means evil white man. So when when a Ghanaian calls an African American a brony, they're actually insulting them. It's no different from a white man calling a black man or African-American or ancient Hebrew Israelite is, is no different from calling them a nigga. So we want to dispel calling our brothers and sisters the term a brony. We are not a bronies. We are the chosen seed. We are we are the chosen generation, as it says in first Peter chapter two, verse nine. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So in times past, we wasn't even considered a people. They said we was two thirds of a man. This was in their clause and their stipulations as they we went from being called uh, coloreds to Negroes to niggers to African-Americans before that black people. So they, they gave us every term, but our rightful term. We are a holy nation. We are a royal priesthood. Every believer, every saint, every child of God has the privilege and responsibility of direct access to to Jehovah, to God, to Yahweh. 
In the Old Testament, the family of Aaron was de designated as a priesthood to God. In the New Testament, that priesthood becomes the birthright of every saint, every Christian, every child of God, every Hebrew Israelite, everyone that has, has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, the true Messiah who was raised in Egypt, the black Messiah, the African Messiah of the tribe of Judah. Solomon was black. He said, you know, I am black, but calmly. Solomon had dreadlocks. Song of Solomon 511, Ezekiel had dreadlocks. Ezekiel was a priest and a prophet. Ezekiel was called in Ezekiel chapter eight, verse three. You see Ezekiel, he was carried by the lock of his hair inside of a vision between heaven and earth by Jehovah, by God, by Yahweh, by the most high. With privilege comes a twofold responsibility, sacrifice and intercessory prayer. You're in Romans 12, 1, it says you are to present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. And this is your reasonable service. Amen. The sacrifices of the believer are his body. Romans 12, 1, his praise to God, Hebrews 13, 15, his substance, Romans 12, 13, and his service, Hebrews 13, 6. The Christian ought also to pray on behalf of others, Colossians 4, 12, Job 42, 10. When Job prayed for his friends, his prayer was heard and God was entreated. Jehovah was entreated. And another reference, which is the first reference, is 1 Peter 2, 2, 9 and 1 Corinthians 9, 19. So we ought to live as the servants of God. Amen. So dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, as we were strangers in America, and now we are pilgrims in Zion. Abstain from fleshly lusts. Don't come over to Zion. Don't come over to Africa with the abominations of America. Don't come over here with your idolatry and your tricking and your pornography. Leave all that in Babylon. Don't come over here with those fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest amongst the Gentiles that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be your good works which they shall behold and glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, the will of Jehovah, the will of Yahweh, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God and honor the king. So I just want to come to you with that quick uh, testimony and I hope that you are blessed from that. And I pray that uh, th this reaches you and that it pierces your soul in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, my Lord and Savior, the Word of God, the faithful and true witness, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord, who ascended above all heavens and is at the right hand of power of God, even though there is none beside God, for God is one, as, I, as I, the book of Isaiah says, but when it says at the right hand, it means that all power and authority has been given unto the Son, the Word of God. For the Word came as a seed into the earth as the Son of God. So go with God and take, take that and soak that up. Give you the benediction and close out. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever, as the people of God say, Amen.